Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today, we will be discussing the sinking of MV Goya, a motor freighter that took part in the Nazis' evacuation operation, Operation Hannibal, and met a horrific end. If you like World War II stories, you are sure to like this one. Quick disclaimer for our younger audience before we dive in. This story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the loss of a vessel, Nazism, suicide, wartime violence, and death that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised for those under the age of 13. Please keep in mind that I'm not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I've done my research. Okay everyone, let's get into it. Originally, MV Goya was not a German ship. She was a Norwegian freighter built by Eikers Mechaniske Verksted shipyard in Oslo, Norway. She was first laid down sometime in 1939, being launched on April 4, 1940, and completed later that year. The original owner of the ship was Johan Ludwig Mowinkel Redery, the shipping line owned by the Norwegian statesman, shipping magnate, and philanthropist Johan Ludwig Mowinkel. She was named MV Goya at this time. The reason why I bring this up is myself and a small group of others online that I came across in my research mistake this as a name given to her by the Germans. She was actually named after the Spanish artist Francisco Goya, a romantic painter and printmaker who was considered one of the most important Spanish artists of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Before we get further into Goya's service history, let's cover her specs. MV Goya was a freighter meant to carry large amounts of freight across the ocean. She displaced 5,230 gross register tons, which is a ship's total internal volume. In imperial measurements, she was 475.72 feet long and had a beam of 57.08 feet wide. Unfortunately, there aren't many specs available on this gorgeous vessel. In metric measurements, that's a length of 146 meters long and a beam of 17.4 meters wide. Installed, she had Burmeister and Wayne 7,600 horsepower oil-fired steam engines, and with this setup, she had a top speed of 18 knots, which is 33 kilometers per hour and 21 miles per hour. Her capacity was meant to accommodate 850 crew members working on the freighter, and this is important to keep in mind for later. As we know, World War II had already started as of September 1st, 1939, and Nazi Germany would invade Denmark and Norway as part of Operation Visarebung, or Operation Visar Exercise in English. This took place from April 9th to June 10th of 1940. During this invasion, MV Goya was seized by Nazi Germany, and sadly, she'd only ever know life under Nazi rule. In 1942, the Nazis refitted the freighter to be an auxiliary transport vessel for their U-boats. Later in 1943, MV Goya was turned into a depot ship, also known as a tender, and she provided support to smaller ships. The following year, she was moved to Memel, which is present-day Klaipeda, Lithuania, and here she was used as a target ship for torpedo practice for the 24th U-boat flotilla. The 24th U-Boat Flotilla was a training flotilla, in German referred to as Ausbildung Flotilla, of Nazi Germany's Kriegsmarine during World War II. Fast forward to 1945, toward the end of World War II, when the writing was clear on the wall for Nazi Germany. They would lose, and they needed to evacuate their citizens out of Norway, Denmark, and other Baltic countries they'd invaded. This is where Operation Hannibal comes in, and before we go over that, if you're interested in another ship that was involved in Operation Hannibal, check out our video on MV Wilhelm Gusloff, the ship sinking with the highest death toll in history. In short, Operation Hannibal was a German naval operation that involved the evacuation by sea of German civilians and troops from the Courland Pocket, East Prussia, West Prussia, and Pomerania starting in mid-January of 1945 and running until May of 1945. This was because the Red Army from the Soviet Union advanced during the East Prussian and East Pomeranian offenses and subsidiary operations and they were out for blood. Operation Hannibal was one of the largest evacuations by sea in history, and by far one of the deadliest. Ships were loaded far beyond capacity during Operation Hannibal in order to save as many troops and civilians as possible retreating to Germany. 
Soviet submarines prowled the Baltic, lying in wait to sink these ships in response to Germany's attempted takeover of Russia, which had backfired spectacularly. MV Wilhelm Gusloff is a great example of this because her capacity was 1,465 passengers, with a crew of 417 as a cruise ship. When she was part of Operation Hannibal, she left Gotenhafen on January 30th, 1945, with an estimated number of passengers being upwards of 10,600, and when the ship sank, up to 9,600 of these people perished. MV Goya was to leave this same port and suffer a similar fate. MV Goya, as part of Operation Hannibal, was to sail from Gotenhafen, which is present-day Gdynia, Poland, on April 16, 1945. She was to proceed around the Hel Peninsula in northern Poland and across the Baltic Sea to Kiel in western Germany. She left as planned, with a convoy that included two smaller vessels, the Kronenfels and Steamtug Aegir, and two minesweeper convoy escorts, the M256 and M328. MV Goya was one of over 1,000 ships that were commissioned to take part in Operation Hannibal evacuations organized by the Kriegsmarine Commander-in-Chief Karl Dunitz. Dunitz would briefly succeed Adolf Hitler as head of state in 1945 after Hitler's suicide, holding this position until the dissolution of the Flensburg government following Germany's unconditional surrender to the Allies just days later. Remember earlier when I told you her capacity was 850 crew? Well, she'd be crowded with over 7,000 evacuees, wounded soldiers, and military personnel. The reason why this is huge is not just because of seats on lifeboats. It's also deadly to overload a ship this massively because in case of an emergency where the ship is sinking, stairways and hallways will be bottlenecked with masses of people pushing to escape. It complicates evacuations, panic spreads faster, and survivability drops dramatically. Unfortunately, this would be the case for everyone aboard the Goya. I know there are Nazis aboard this ship. What they've done is disgusting, and we all know this. However, please remember there were innocent German civilians, children, and families aboard that did not deserve the fate that they would face. If you want to hear another tragic story of a ship being lost on the Baltic Sea, check out our video on MV Estonia, a passenger ferry surrounded by controversies and conspiracies. Just four hours after leaving Gotenhafen, while near the Hell Peninsula, MV Goya and her convoy were attacked by Soviet bombers. Since we do have some younger audience members, the bombers we are referring to are military combat aircraft designed to attack ground and naval targets by dropping air-to-ground weaponry, launching torpedoes, or deploying air-launched cruise missiles, not U-boats like we saw with MV Wilhelm Gusloff. There are three main types of Soviet bombers, the Moscow Aviation Institute BBMAI, the Yakovlev Yak-2, and the Yakovlev Yak-4. We don't know the exact models that were used to attack Goya, however. During the air raids, a bomb dropped by these bombers struck MV Goya, but caused minimal damage to the vessel. She rounded the Hell Peninsula and left Gdansk Bay, several miles north of Cape Rysholt, which is present-day Cape Rizoi, and the convoy was spotted. Soviet mine layer submarine L-3 spotted her, and they were not just packing mines, but torpedoes as well. Goya was faster than most submarines, but the convoy was slowed down by engine problems on the Kronenfels, and because of this, there was also a 20-minute stop for repairs. In an evacuation like this, every second counts. Any delay or mistake could spell disaster, and unfortunately in this case, it would. At exactly 11.56 p.m. local time, L-3 Captain Vladimir Konovolov gave his order to fire a spread of four torpedoes. Two of these torpedoes would hit their mark on MV Goya. One struck amidships, and the second exploded in the stern, sending an enormous plume of fire and smoke into the night sky. Smoke, fire, and despair climbed into the cold Baltic night air as panic spread throughout the ship like wildfire. Refugees that were asleep on the top deck were crushed by the ship's falling mass, as the explosion was so forceful they collapsed. Within just a few minutes, the ship broke in half, with the fire lapping at the upper decks. Just after midnight and less than four minutes after the torpedoes hit MV Goya, she sank, drowning thousands in their beds before they ever had the chance to escape. As we stated earlier, MV Goya was overloaded, but she was also a freighter, and therefore she didn't have the same safety features of a passenger ship, and she sank to a depth of approximately 76 meters, or 249 feet, to the bottom of the Baltic Sea. 
given the rapid speed of the sinking, most of her passengers went down with her or died of hypothermia in the frigid waters of the Baltic. In April, the Baltic Sea averages between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 46 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 0 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. As for her exact death toll, it is unknown and difficult to estimate due to the fact her manifests were not accurate. Authors cite the total number of passengers as, quote, over 6,000, 6,700, or 7,200, but the exact number of passengers might never be known. The evacuations during Operation Hannibal were frantic and chaotic, thus the boarding process was utter chaos and disorganized, with people oftentimes occupying any open space available on board. In any event, the death toll definitely exceeded 6,000 people and more than likely reached at least 7,000, making it one of the worst maritime disasters in history, exceeded by only one other ship, MV Wilhelm Guslov, a fellow Operation Hannibal vessel. RMS Lancastria is another ship that suffered an enormous loss of life in World War II, and we have an episode on her if you're interested. As for survivors, this is another number that is difficult to estimate, though most researchers estimate it at right around 182 people saved, 176 soldiers and 6 civilians, of whom 9 died shortly afterward, more than likely of hypothermia. Other notable figures cite 172 or 183, but we'll never know for sure. Rest in peace to all of the victims of this horrific tragedy. May they rest easy. Though the position of the wreckage of MV Goya had been common knowledge among Polish fishermen, it had only ever been discovered and referred to as Wreck Number 88 on Polish Navy maps. On August 26, 2002, the wreck was discovered by three Polish technical divers, Grzegorz Dominik, Michael Porana, and Marek Jagodzinski, and they also managed to salvage the ship's compass. Exactly 58 years after the sinking of MV Goya, the wreck was located on April 16, 2003 by an international expedition under the direction of Ulrich Ristemeyer, and they were aided by 3D sonar scanning. The position records of Goya's convoy were found to be incorrect, and they were probably noted during a hasty escape. During the rediscovery, another smaller vessel was seen on the surface above MV Goya, and initially it was thought to be a fishing vessel. But when Restemeyer's ship, the Fritz Reuter, approached them, this other vessel that supposedly had divers fled. The wreck lies roughly 76 meters or 249 feet below the surface of the Baltic Sea. Remarkably, she's in pretty good condition, though she is covered in fishing nets, much like the wreckage of RMS Lusitania. Survivors of the wreck have lain wreaths at the surface to show their condolences for the 6,000 plus victims of the sinking of MV Goya. Shortly after she was found, the wreck of MV Goya was declared a war grave by the Polish Maritime Office in Gdynia, where the ship set out in 1945. In 2006, they published their decision in an official government gazette of the Pomeranian Vovoido ship, making diving within 500 meters or 1,640 feet of the wreck illegal. Overall, the story of MV Goya is tragic from start to finish. Rest in peace to all of the victims, and I hope their descendants have found peace. I admire the Polish government for marking this wreck as an official gravesite, and for protecting and honoring the memory of those lost there. If you would like to hear another tragic, harrowing World War II story, check out our episode on the Nazi prison ship SS Cap Arcona, often given the sickening nickname of the Nazi Titanic. Thanks so much to our lovely patrons for subscribing and supporting the channel and myself as a creator. You guys are awesome and it really does help us out. If you'd like to help support this channel and future episodes, go to patreon.com slash shipwrecksunday to join. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a 5-star review, as it does help us reach more listeners like you. If you have any ships you'd like us to cover, please leave us a comment and you might hear your favorite ship here on the podcast. Check out our community tab for updates and to interact with us. And we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tune in next Sunday for the story of the Adriana, a refugee ship that tragically sank off the coast of Greece in 2023, resulting in the deaths of hundreds. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.